Greetings and welcome. Uh, we're going over like constructing and naming and measuring angles and stuff like that. Uh, it says write three names for the angle. I could refer to this as angle K. I could refer to this as angle one. I could also refer to this by a formal name, first, middle, last, initial, JKL. Uh, and any of these uh, three letter names for angles can also be flipped around. So I could have had L, K, J. Be careful that your angle sign and your L don't start looking the same. Uh, when it's just this angle symbol, uh, it's referring to the geometric figure, the angle, uh, like so. And then also we remembered that uh, the vertex in these angle names is the significant point. It has to be the middle initial for any three letter angle name. Uh, you can't swap that around. Otherwise, you're breaking the law. Here we go. Uh, question 12. Uh, it says, find the measure. So this is not talking about an angle. This is going to equal some number here. Uh, find the measure of angle EOD. So vertex at O. That's convenient. Uh, like so, like so. And uh, notice that my protractor is not zeroed up with one of those sides, one of those rays that form the angle. Uh, but I can use the uh, degree measure that it's pointing to as uh, like the coordinates of a point and then use uh, the angle measurement postulate thing to be able to just subtract those and take the absolute value to find the difference of those. Uh, and actually, because these angles are measured uh, two different ways, starting zero on the left or zero on the right, I can actually use either of those. So this, uh, if I use the inner arc, it looks like this is a 40 degree, and this one is a 65 degree, I'm guessing. I kind of drew all over it. So uh, the measure of angle EOD is going to equal the abs val of, I'll even do it backwards just to annoy us, 40 minus 65. Uh, so that's going to be abs val negative 15. No. 25. Man. All right, uh, which is uh, 25 degrees. That's the same thing I would get if I used the alternative numbers of uh, looks like 115 and uh, 140. That also happens to have a, a distance or an absolute value difference of, uh, of 25. So either of those would work, uh, and that's right, kind of how you measure angles using protractors. Let's see, find the indicated angle measure. All right, this was a uh, angle addition postulate. The idea is that the, the big angle, all right, uh, angle ABC right there, uh, is going to be the sum of the two smaller angles. So this is angle ABD and the, right, the sum of the two non-overlapping angles is uh, what that will end up being. I just realized I kind of gave all of these single arcs uh, which is a little bit tricky and deceptive because uh, those are not congruent angles. I'm not predicting that to be the case. There you go. So, um, so to find the, uh, first I'm going to find the value of X and then I'll find those individual angles. So I'll write an equation. I'll say that uh, the blue plus the fuchsia is equal to the green. Uh, so let's say 2X plus 23 plus 9x minus 5 is going to equal 95 degrees. When I plug in all of the corresponding angle measures for those, uh, combined like terms, 2x and 9x is 11x. 23 minus 5 is 18. <coughs> right, right. And then now it's just classic algebra, right? I learned some geometry and how, for some reason I'm doing algebra again. Uh, so I'll have 11x. Ooh, uh equals uh what's that gonna be 95 minus 10 would have been 85 minus 877 oh yeah and then uh ryan is correct divide both sides by 11 z's and we get x equals seven but the classic this is where like i would mark this as my answer on a test and i'd lose points because we want to know a b d and d b c uh so the measure of angle a b d is going to be what i get when i plug seven in for that so 2 times 7 plus 23, uh, 14 plus 23, 37 degrees. And then the other one, I could now just subtract 37 from 95, or I can plug it in here. Uh, 
right? Multiple solution, multiple approaches to the solution. So DBC is going to equal nine times seven uh, minus five. There we go. So nine times seven, 63 minus five, uh, 58, I believe, right? So those are going to be my, my final answers. All right, so uh, the big idea here, what, here was uh, just the two smaller angles out of the big angle. Question, comment? Really? All right. All right, yeah. Yeah, like there's, yeah, there's multiple ways you can kind of plug this in. Um, one of the things I do want to point out is I couldn't assume that BD was an angle bisector. All right, that would have been like a wrong assumption. Uh, so I couldn't assume that this was equal to that, but... But yeah, there's a few different ways you can set it up. You can do subtraction. Uh, I could have said that this is equal to 95 minus that. Uh, right? A bunch of different ways. But as long as you're obeying the laws of mathematics, you will be fine. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to try a construction here. I should have pre-prepped my ellipse tool here. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Uh, so if I want to bisect an angle... Uh, one of the things I pick an arbitrary uh, radius and I swipe an arc, which is now that created two intersections here. All right, uh, along this arc, and I want to I want to bisect it, divide it in half exactly. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is line up my compass at one of those points, and I'm going to pick another arbitrary radius. Uh, the The issue is I don't want my radius so small that it wouldn't reach more than halfway between this intersection and that intersection. So that's not helpful. So I need it more than halfway, and it can technically even be, let's see if I swipe it this way, uh, it can technically be oversized past that point, and that will still work. Oh, well, rotating a circle isn't that interesting. Uh, didn't mean to do that. But, uh, but here we go. Let's say I put it right here, and I'm going to swipe this arc like so, and keeping a constant radius, and moving this over here, and swipe this arc, I now have two new intersections. And I've got three points that are going to be collinear uh, that will form an angle bisector. And so if I uh, draw this right through the intersection of those arcs, and the vertex or the vertex in one of those arcs. You didn't necessarily have to draw those blue arcs so large that you get both of them, but I find it to be somewhat satisfying to get like the triple head shot simultaneously. It's like, come on, that's pretty good, pretty good. Uh, no, 360, no scope, you know? Uh, so let's see, and I think this is the last problem I was gonna do. Uh, if I know that this bisects angle ABC, what, uh, what do I know about these smaller angles? I heard, let's see, not to, let's see, the, the measurements are equal, the angles are congruent. So by definition of angle bisector, I could say that angle ABD is congruent uh, to angle CBD, right? And I just want to get us super familiar and confident with the congruence and equality language. So congruence is for figures, objects, shapes, solids, angles, segments, uh, things like that. And because these angles are congruent, then by definition of congruent uh, angles, then their measurements are equal. All right, so that's def of Kong is why I can convert from congruence to, ah, man, equality. All right, so measurements refers to numbers. Uh, there we go. So numbers are equal. And now, because those are equal, I could then, using substitution, plug in their corresponding things. So let's see. So that means 2x plus 81. I just swapped that around, didn't I? I guess, yeah. I'll write 2x plus 81 over here. <coughs> now, I don't need the kind of formal... You, you can skip the formality up here. I'm just showing it to us to get us more confident with that language and that approach. If you just jumped immediately to writing your equation, I'm fine with that. Uh, and now I can solve this. Uh, I like to move the, the little guy to the big guy to keep my variables coefficient positive if I can. But there's really, as long as you're obeying the laws of math, you'll be just fine. Uh, we'll get to the same solution eventually. Uh, subtract 81 from both sides. Oh, man, I'm, I'm uncomfortable about that difference. Let's see. 
It's going to be negative because the more influential of the numbers is negative. 81 minus 30 would have been 51. 48. All right. In the negative variety. Uh, and then divide both sides by 6 because dividing by 6 is the inverse operation of multiplying. And then I'll flip it around. Oh, man. Uh, negative 8. All right. Now, that's a little weird that it's negative, but uh, theoretically, if I plug this in to find the angle measures, they should still be uh, end up positive. If I end up with a negative angle, that's a little weird. Although, in uh, pre-calculus and uh, trigonometry, you can't have negative angle degree measures. Um, tell you what, side note, here we go. Uh, if I talk about a positive 30 degree angle, it would look something like this. And if I talk about like a negative 45 degree angle, it would look something like that. All right, so uh, positive angles are counterclockwise, right? They spiral this way and negative angles go clockwise, spiraling that way. And they start at the positive x-axis. So there's your little pre-calculus foreshadowing there for you. And let's find the measure of CBD, measure angle CBD is going to equal 2 times negative 8 plus 81. And I get uh, negative 16 plus 81. Uh, that's going to equal 81 minus 10, 71, 65. Sounds right to me. And because this is 65, I could then plug this in up here and use transitive property or substitution and find that ABD is the same thing. Right? So those are the same. Uh, because of the definition of bisects, all right, so this, the reason this is true was def of angle bisector comment. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pull that up on the screen, but I'll say bye to our internet friends. Bye-bye.